My name is Adam Mabry. Uh, I am the senior pastor of Aletheia Church in Boston and Providence and Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I am the author of a few books and I teach at a seminary. And one of the books that I've written is Stop Taking Sites. I wrote this book because I, I'm a person with really strong opinions, really deep convictions, uh, you know, very often, you know, I, I speak and then I think, you know, I've, I, I've spent my life inserting my feet into my mouth. And yet I have been placed by God quite hilariously in the middle of a, of a, of a city where I have to be far more thoughtful about my words. And, you know, and so therefore I've had to learn what it means to communicate strong truth whilst also uh, doing a better job of listening to people who disagree with me. There are the, the kind of reflex that exists in me and that may exist in some other Christians as well to think in black and white, right, wrong, sin, righteousness is not always the correct filter. It's not always the right lens through which to see things, that there are certain things where the Bible is intentionally um, intentionally speaking in ways that seem paradoxical to us, but that that's actually a feature and not a bug. And so the book is about uh, a few of those a few of those ways the Bible teaches certain things, intentions, and how holding those tensions is actually the point. There are a great number of things that we get very tribal about that the Bible simply doesn't. And so my invitation is where the Bible is very exclusive, let's be very exclusive. But where the Bible is speaking intentions, we must speak about those things in the way the Bible speaks about them. Otherwise, we fall victim to, I think, what is a more fleshly temptation to just be with people who think and feel like we do. And the problem with that is that when we're around people just like us, we have a very difficult time doing what Jesus asked us to do, namely making disciples of nations, people very different than us, whether the nations be in our backyard, you know, in our own town or actually across across the world. And so um, the the idea is not that we should, you know, have some sort of milk toast middle way. Uh, that's not biblical. Jesus never, he didn't try to blend, you know, Judaism with Roman paganism. That's, it's not that, uh, nor is it that we should be sort of like, you know, relativistic. Well, you know, you think that, but I think this, but that's okay. Um, rather it's to look deeper at scripture. The Bible speaks about like Christian victory over sin in like really blistering tones also right next to like these deeply moving passages about suffering. How can that be? And so this, this book is very much like a wrestle with like, how can those things be right there next to one another uh, rather than to try and like take the Bible verses I like and have them trump the ones that I, I do not. No, in fact, I think the Bible teaches us very clearly that God's sovereignty undergirds human's responsibility, that if God were not sovereign, human responsibility really wouldn't make sense. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, when, if we kind of line up everything that those scriptures say about God's sovereignty, it is, I mean, it, it, it's stunning. And, and if you're, you know, if you're kind of a reformed Christian, maybe you're used to hearing about God's sovereignty. And, and if it doesn't stun you, it, it, it look again, um, because the level of God's involvement in his creation is fascinating. I mean, he, he upholds the universe by the word of his power. Like not even a hair falls from my head unless, you know, apart from God's will, which in my case, God has thought about many times of the hair parting from my head. But like that is, that is an intense level of involvement, uh, which if that's where all, like if that was all we had, you know, we might be determinists. But the Bible also says you know, things like choose this day whom you will serve as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, God's in Isaiah, God is saying, look, look, come, let's reason together. Let's think about this. Um, and so it seems like the scriptures are saying like God, God's sovereignty, God's rulership of the world is exercised in such a way that a, he's involved in a deep level, a way that honestly scares us, but in a way that enables and undergirds our responsibility it doesn't cancel it or make it illusory um if if god had wanted to to teach us that things were very mechanistic that's a very simple concept to actually embrace you know the the bible could have said that very clearly you know um because god isn't unjust he can't hold us accountable for something that isn't real so we are in fact very responsible and it seems to me that the way god is wired and rules creation undergirds that it can't it can't undermine it. I'm deeply desirous 
for uh, our uh, what seems to be a grave crisis of identity and and uh, and desire for the future and all of our political infighting to not be solved by a political leader or a new program, but to realize no, we 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 need to come to Jesus, who is the only uh, who is the only one who can bring us together and who's the only one worth living the future for. So I would say pray for renewal here in Boston, in our church, and for the for the rest of the Western. World.